Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about dirty data in messy processes. This is sort of the precursor to a major topic called exploratory data analysis. When we take a look inside uh, work, what we start seeing is functions, and we've talked about those. So we have different functions. It could be manufacturing function, purchasing, and so forth. And then functions work in processes. So processes are the flow of work across functions. Processes can be measured, and then we analyze the output of the measures. And that's what statistical analysis is doing. It's understanding how processes change over time. When we take a look at this, we start seeing that one of the key ingredients to understanding this flow from function to process to measures to analysis is determining what are the rational subgroups, what are the analyzable components that we can use to understand what is happening in the flow. So for instance, we might have different people. They can be a rational subgroup. We could have subgroups of equipment. We could have subgroups by process step and so forth. And understanding how each of these different logical categories performs is one way for us to understand how the sequence of work is delivering value or maybe even losing value. So processes can be measured and analysis on those measures will inform us then about how effective and efficient that process is. So the technique that we can use for understanding these is some form of graphical analysis. Now we'll return to that when we talk about the subject of, of DMAIC and the measure step. But for right now, let's just take a look in general about processes. We see we have input measures to processes, we have in-process measures, and we have results measures. Remember we talked about that on the SIPOC map. And so all key process subgroups that influence performance need to be characterized to understand how that flow across each process step is occurring. When we look at that, we see the results measures, that's describing the level or rate of performance change. However, in process, what we see is those are the building blocks that create the results. And so those in process measures are how we're gonna improve the efficiency and effectiveness to get a change in the results. So we'll tend to focus on the in process measures. So a process, for instance, if we're looking at a key measure of time, we'll have process lead time, that's the work that it takes before the process begins. And we can actually look at the time of process, something like order arrival rate, or something occurring at the beginning of the process. The process cycle time then is the time it takes to transition one unit from the beginning of that flow to the end of that flow. And so as we're looking at this, this lead time, we might think of it as supplier lead time. For the customer, it's order turnaround time from the time we receive the order till our process is done and ready to ship. And then at each stage in the process, we can have combinations of time, setup time or changeover to get ready to do the actual work, and then the actual process time, which we would consider value adding time. Now, when we want to understand the process, the best way to do that is to take one piece of product, if you will, and start it from the beginning and track it all the way through, step by step through the process steps. In Lean, they call this one piece flow. And as we're understanding one piece flow, we can take advantage of this to study how long it takes, what's the beginning and the ending key that tells us that's the cycle time for that particular process step. We can understand the transaction cost, what's costing for that. We can figure out what does it take to do that good and bad. And so, by analyzing that one piece flow, what we can get is a very good idea of the logical boundaries that define all of the value adding work and also potentially the waste in the process. However, when we look at processes, we also see that the data that we have, these observations that we want to record, can very often be distorted. And when that data is distorted, what we start seeing is we get wrong results. We draw wrong conclusions. So biased data can come from samples that are biased. We take the information from a way that is not fully representative of the process. Sometimes it's distorted by the graphics that we use, the way we present the data. And we don't present it in a way that actually allows you to see fully how to interpret that information in the proper way. Sometimes people will manipulate the data so that they say, ah, oh, we don't want to see this upper end data because it's in a tail of a distribution, or this is messy data, we don't want it, and so they throw it away. And we don't want to throw away that data because that could be the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Some people apply statistics wrongly. So some people will take an average, if you will, out of attribute data. 
And so we start taking a look, and that's going to be also leading to a distorted thing. And sometimes the data is just bad because the measurement system does not record it. You've probably heard the saying, garbage in, garbage out. Well, that's exactly what we don't want to have. We want to understand the quality of the data and what it's actually telling us. Now, what are bad data? Well, the quality of data has to be considered relative to both the context of the process as well as the question we're addressing. Now, when we first look at a problem, the thing we should remember is all management decisions, all process decisions have been based on the data we already have. So we should first look at the dirty data, the data that is not corrected because that is what we have historically been using to run the process. And by analyzing the dirty data, what we're going to do is we're going to understand the implications of the decisions we've made in the past, some of which may have created the problems we see today. So one thing that we can also say is if we have accurate measure, it's going to be really not so good if we're measuring the wrong thing. So we have to make sure that we have the right things measured in our process. So where should we take measurements in the process? Are we taking them at the right control point? Are we taking them at a point where we can actually have a feedback loop and use the data then to adjust the process? So poor data quality occurs when we have the wrong values assigned to the wrong attributes, and we don't really understand then what's happening in that process. So we're gonna follow a principle. The principle is if we use the product we can use the product flowing through the process and its progress towards completion is going to be able to be the standard by which we want to take the measures. So we want to prevent poor data quality from being collected in the first place. That's the easiest way to deal with these things. That's why after we do this exploratory data analysis, we're going to be ready to start the measure phase where we really do clean up the data. We also see though that data can deteriorate over time. So the data that we had from a process that was operating a year ago is different than the same data from the process today. Now many of you will make a very common mistake. You'll grab all the data you can about something for the whole history and analyze it all at once. And what you're doing then is you're de dealing with data analysis across those changes in the process. And you're not going to have an accurate perception. So we have to understand where did the process change? Each of those changes of process is a new rational subgroup and needs to be analyzed individually. We also see that what's good for, for uh, quality, if you will, in terms of the operational, may not be good enough quality for potentially the unlimited applications we have in the future. So if we take a look at a data warehouse, for instance, we should anticipate when we put data in there, how will we use it in the future? So there's two different ways we can use the data. One, we can use it for diagnostics. That's going to be our exploratory data analysis. We can use the dirty data there, understand what's going on. But if we want to have remedial data analysis, that means how do we fix the problem? We have to make sure the data quality is good. And so we're going to have to go through two different phases. First, we'll look at the data as it is in its current dirty state the current messy process, trying to sort out some logical conclusions. And then we're going to take that and say, let's now sort this out in the DMAIC measure phase and understand how can we really get the process better understood in terms of what we're going to see in the future. So that's the beginning point in terms of what we are positioning ourselves to think about exploratory data analysis. So now we're going to have a series of, of uh, uh, sessions where we talk about different components of exploratory data analysis.